Hello, today I am very pleased to have Carmen Braidwood speaking with me today. Carmen Braidwood is a confidence on camera coach and broadcaster with more than 20 years experience in commercial radio and TV. Seen around Australia as a regular presenter on the Nine Network's Destination WA, she's also notched up appearances on Nine News, The Today Show, The Project and Today Tonight. Perth radio listeners will know Carmen from her stints on 6PR's Breakfast and Weekend Breakfast and a run of seven years hosting 96FM's Much Love Breakfast Show. Welcome, Carmen. Thank you so much for coming on the Louise M. Empowerment Podcast Series today. Oh, thanks, Louise. It's really nice to be here. You sound you sound beautiful then. It was like I just landed at my destination and I was being <laughs> welcomed by the head of the cabin crew on Qantas. Thanks. Fantastic. <laughs> well, over 17 years uh, as a flight attendant, I certainly did a few of those PAs and sometimes I wasn't even sure where I was landing. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Heady days, heady days. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we were, you know, went to a few destinations in a day, so it was like, oh, oh wow. <laughs> but thank you coming from you, such a professional in the industry. I will take that. Thank you so much. So, thank Carmen, uh, many people, we talk about where did our business journey start, start, but I am really intrigued as to where our empowerment journey started. And so today I'm taking you back to your childhood. So we'll talk about did empowerment start in your childhood? and then take it through to your adulthood and uh, how you've taken it through to your adulthood and what you're doing today. So firstly, what does the empowerment mean to you? It's a big question, isn't it? Um, I, think it's, I think it's a sense of confidence, of, of the knowledge that you can safely go out of your comfort zone, try new things, try hard things, put yourself out there, the knowledge that you will, even if things go horribly wrong, be okay. That's Fantastic. Now, some have said confidence is an external thing. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, but I think you might have an inner belief of confidence that you're confident. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I, I always have. And it's waned at times, definitely in my adult journey. And certainly even as a kid, I guess, you know, during my teenage years, there were, there were times when my confidence took a hit for a few different reasons. But on the whole, I think thanks to my upbringing, there was definitely this sense that nothing was out of bounds for me, which is, I don't think was all that typical of maybe the gener generation that preceded me, you know. So I'm a, I'm a child of baby boomers, uh, but like but unlike other children of baby boomers, I was born a millennial. You know, I was born that little bit later. I'm a cusp of the Gen X and, and, and millennials in 1981. And I think some Gen Xs who were raised by baby boomers were a little bit limited by a lack of technology, by a lack of access to certain kinds of education and uh, by a lack of expectation around them. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, you'll go through life, you'll get a job and you'll work and you'll die. You know, that kind of, had, that, that's what I've been told <laughs> was kind of what you were told as a kid. And, and, and I had parents who definitely kind of viewed life that way, don't get me wrong. Um, but there was definitely this overwhelming sense of support and belief that we could both, uh, my sister and I, go on and do anything we wanted. In spite of, you know, from time to time, you know, dad would say something like, well, I don't really see why girls need to go to university. Or um, he didn't believe that women really needed to be in any workplace for a long time. But I think this really cool thing happened as Sally and I grew up in the age that we did through the 80s and 90s. Um, we, we educated dad you know, a lot of the time and surprised him. And like many blokes who become parents to daughters, um, I think he he changed his tune yeah, <laughs> about what very he wise. Yeah, about what he expected from women, in particular yeah. his girls. Yeah. Right. So where did it come from? Was there an external influence for you or was it your mum or was it school? Where where did all that come from? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Mum had a lot to do with it. Yeah. She was pretty, pretty ahead of her time in a lot of ways. You know, uh, I don't, I didn't know this at the time growing up, but I know now that that mum auditioned to go and be on TV when she was oh. in her early twenties, you know, or even a bit younger. Uh, so, you know, she used to dance at the local stomp um, when she was in her teen years. So she had a performance uh, interest and she really wanted to do these kind of things that put her out herself out there but you know being a young woman from northern you know born in the 40s there, there were just not that many of those kinds of opportunities for her to do those things so I think uh, a lot of generations do this they give their kids everything they didn't have and uh, you know and mum doesn't complain about her childhood uh, by any stretch I think she knows that she had a pretty privileged childhood in many ways but you just didn't have those kinds of opportunities you know she would have loved to have taken dancing lessons or learned to sing or be, been a performer or um, you know had that kind of training as a as a as a young woman but she didn't so she gave it to us you know and and it must have been particularly frustrating for her to to watch sometimes when we kind of didn't adopt it you know I can imagine now um being an adult myself you know I, I if I signed my daughter up to ballet lessons and she ripped her tights apart and decided not to go I'd be incredibly frustrated as well you know <laughs> mum would have been pulling her hair out she would have loved the opportunity to go to ballet. Um, it didn't suit me. I was not a. I was not that kind of kid. I was not graceful. I'm still not really that graceful. <laughs> I, I think you just hit something on. You know, there that your mum might have wanted you to do that, but mm -hmm. you didn't actually mind. Perhaps that you didn't do that. Mm. Yeah, you I think, allowed yeah. you to do what you did want to do, even though oh, she yeah. tried you in the ballet tights first, maybe, yeah. but. Um, yeah, she had a great appreciation for what made each of us individual and very quickly picked up on what our strengths were and lent into those. So neither of us were really sporty kids or both overweight kids. Um, that probably really frustrated mum too, but, you know, she didn't get to eat lots of treats and things as a kid, so she probably just you know threw them at us um and so we yeah we were we were kind of uncoordinated uh, and you know overweight kids who weren't good at sports so we went into singing lessons and acting lessons and those sorts of things that gave us another outlet and did wonders for our self-confidence you know um, I've always always said all kids should be involved in some kind of artistic pursuit something that gives them an opportunity to learn how to perform under pressure you know if you can go on stage and remember lines and get yourself out of a tricky situation when you don't remember what it is you were there to say uh, if you can perform when you're nervous you can you can do almost anything in life you know it's a very very powerful skill to give kids and and even when um and when i don't want to speak on my sister's behalf but both of us you know caught bullying over the years um even when that happened remarkably um those performance skills gave you a sense of confidence and knowledge that you're good at something else and it and it didn't matter so much if you couldn't run fast yeah well done you just found your thing um mm. so you were talking about bullying and uh, i in my day it was just mean girl there was mean girls <laughs> at yeah. school um and so i suffered a little bit like that too but uh, did your mum help you through that or was it the school that helped you through that situation yeah, definitely. Um, I don't remember school really getting involved ever, you know, and I don't think, like, I think the understanding of bullying back then was that it was physical. It was something we'd seen on American television, you know, guys being slammed into locker room doors and things like that. And so I never probably even called it bullying, you know. Um, there were just systematic little attacks from mean girls over the years that just you know, were, were carried out and exacted. Uh, and occasionally it was kind of boys, you know, critiquing my appearance and things like that that would come up. Um, but that wasn't anywhere near as hurtful as the girls. Uh, but, you know, realistically, I look back on there were probably moments when I did that to other girls too. And that's what's so heartbreaking about it. I think that there's something in our female psyche that just wants to bring down other girls and I don't know why uh, I, I think there's a bit of I think there's a bit of fierce defense of our friends too sometimes that falls into that category and it ends up being 
a bit of bullying too. Um, yeah, but what helped us through? I don't know. Uh, just having that other place, you know, go yeah. to singing school, dancing, whatever it is you were doing outside yeah. of school. Uh, you had friends elsewhere. You had abilities that were being championed elsewhere. Um, and I think I was pretty lucky that I had academic prowess as well to fall back on. So for every kid who made fun of me for not being able to run fast or hit the tee ball or catch the cricket ball, um, you know, there was the, there was the fact that I could read and they couldn't in the classroom, you know, and they probably felt terrible reading out loud. Yeah. And I love that you focused on what you were good at. Yeah, what, what you were not good at. That, yeah, that's empowering in itself. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't I know that word empowerment as a child. Mm. I'm, I'm using that as if we we knew it, <laughs> but uh, it's it's quite recent that um, we've all been using that. I think. But um, so it sounds like your transition. You already had that sense of I can do going mm. into your adulthood. Um, was there anything else? I mean, you went to uni obviously mm -hmm. did well there so that gave you a uh, built even more confidence on and then the transition it was it into radio after that yeah well, it came about radio for me during uni um I'd gone and enrolled in an arts degree at UWA which I was told um was the only university I should consider going to in the state back then it was probably the most well regarded academically it's not the case anymore uh but you know I, I was there and I found it a little bit lacking in vocational experiences I think by the time I got to 19 20 years old I was really ready to work you know I wanted to make money and I don't think that's a unique experience so when I was going along to tutorials and discussing a lot of theoretical things and all of my work at uni was so theoretical I was going what can I do that just is a thing I just want to get my hands dirty and work and make money and I heard an ad for radio school on um on 96 FM and so I um I called and asked about an audition uh I was given an audition I went along I you know I read a script I read some news into a microphone it was the only time I'd ever done anything like that before um, um, but I had that performance background, so I was able to to give it a bit of a shake, and um, yeah, and I and I got into this particular radio school, and I guess I I never I never would have felt nervous about that, you know, I didn't. It was just like oh cool, but it but it um, it felt really great to to get in. That was sort of the exciting thing that came from that, and um, yeah, th th there was an empowerment that came from from receiving that nod of approval and I knew that a practical job was on the other side I had no intention of not finishing uni and I did eventually after I got through the um through the radio academy um but here's the tricky thing is dad um wasn't prepared to pay for me to go to the academy of radio so I had to go and save the money myself and that's when I again can do attitude I I networked with friends who were active acting buddies who had this great job working for constable care doing puppet shows and I got in and started doing puppet shows full-time for a little while so I could save the money for radio school six months later I had the money I went off and did the course and and the rest is really history. The, yeah, as soon as I got into that course, I started doing work experience at 6PR and, yeah, went off to my first regional announcing job in um, in Mandra, then then up to Kalgoorlie and then over east. And, yeah, it all went from there. So the can-do attitude, even, uh, you know, when your dad said, no, no, you yeah. didn't go, oh, well, I can't do that. You actually, yeah. again, said, yes, I can. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, always keep the solutions. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Now I know um, there was a bit of a stumble in your radio career after the seven years, and mm -hmm. I did read um, you did say it was a humiliating and frustrating blow to the ego. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. But um, but actually, I met you a few years ago, and that was just after your radio. And you were you were like, what am I going to do now? You just yeah wondered what you were going to do and look at you now you actually got through that as well but what helped you get through that what gave you uh, what supported you through that yeah um, what was it I guess um yeah when we met it's only been a few months I think since the show was axed you know and let's not like 
sugarcoat it. It was a show that I loved. I really enjoyed working on it. It had completely changed under my under my nose. Don't get me wrong. It was so different. To, you know, the, the goalposts had shifted completely from when I started working there. Uh, but, it, you know, it didn't work out. You know, after seven years in this one station with an audience that, that I that I love speaking to every day. We were told not to come back the next day. You know, we did a show on Monday, no show Tuesday. You know, that said you can do a farewell if you want. You could tell that was definitely not what they really wanted us to do. <laughs> and um, we went home and that was it. So yeah, it was humiliating and, and frustrating in many ways. But the thing that definitely helped me was this very secure knowledge that something else would come along and that only through space in your life can new good things come to you. And I was genuinely excited. It wasn't something I was saying. I was. I was really excited to do something different. By then it had been 16 years, I think, that I'd been working in, in radio full time on breakfast shows. So I was pretty tired. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but I was also really sick. I uh, found out I was pretty sick um, a few months after that. And so I was really feeling it, you know, I was just drained. And so I knew I needed to do something different. But as you saw when we met, I didn't know what it was yet. I had this, just this inkling of idea that I could maybe make a business teaching people in business how to use media skills to do what they do and create their content, much like you're doing right now. Um, but I didn't know how that was going to look. And I was open to anything. You know, I was thinking, am I going to get a, a government job? Am I going to go and re-tap into this almost journalistic background? I never became a journalist, but I was a newsreader on radio stations and I always wanted to pursue that in TV. And I thought, am I going to go and do that? And I explored so many different options and I was probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed as to what it would be. Um, but I was, on the whole, very excited because I needed a change. See, again, you just believed that things would be okay. You would you yeah. try something. I do remember, I think you can credit me a little bit because I do remember saying, oh, I'd love to learn how to, you know, speak on camera yeah. or something. And I think maybe a few people said that to you. Spot on. It's yeah. exactly what happened. And, you know, it's so funny and maybe it had something to do with how unwell I was at the time, but I didn't listen for the longest time. People kept on saying, that's a great idea. I would do that, especially you ladies at that lunch when I met you. You know, you were you were all so enthusiastic, like, that's an amazing idea. I want to learn to do that. And um, it took me a couple of years, didn't it, before I finally sort of went, oh, hang on, this is what people are asking me for. And, and and the dots connected to make it a confidence on camera coach, you know, rather than a media coach for business, um, you know, that, that never really came together until the pandemic. And it became painstakingly obvious that that's what everyone suddenly needed was the capacity to cope with things like this, a Zoom call, or, um, you know, to be a content creator for everyone was suddenly necessary. Every company was a media company finally and um and yeah the 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 whole thing just finally made sense and yeah I listened to people like you <laughs> finally so yeah again I think that's a really important uh, thing to to highlight actually because mm -hmm. you said you're putting it out there to the universe but you weren't actually listening no. to the universe you know mm -hmm. you were wondering what it was but it was staring you right in the face and that's that's actually a fantastic reminder that even for me um, and I know others will really benefit from that. So thanks for sharing with that. Um, oh, yeah. The head was getting in the way still back yeah. then. And, and, and I think that the biggest thing was um, it was an, a kind of imposter syndrome for sure. It was the hangover of my media career and thinking that I had to I had to have this new career look a certain way for myself to still feel successful. You know, it was really all about looking like I was, uh, you know, getting runs on the board rather than seeking out my own happiness. And definitely in the last 12 months, it's been far more about how I want to work, how I want my life to look, uh, how much time I want to spend with my husband and with my dog <laughs> and my stepson, you yeah. know, like that wanted, I, I've changed my approach to work so much. And it, it's not about other people. It's it's about me and it's about the people I can help in my business. So how did you come to that conclusion? Have you been doing some self-development, mm -hmm. reading a book, um, being amongst 
people with that drive or, you know, uh, I think it was the, it was probably the illness. It was, you know, that, um, so the, you know, to stop being so oblique about it. When I, when we met, I was an, an undiagnosed with Addison's disease. So Addison's disease to anybody who knows what it is, it's, um, it can change your life, can't it? To those who don't understand it, it's, um, it's adrenal insufficiency, which is not adrenal fatigue, which is, you know, being a bit tired and struggling with uh, general energy levels. Adrenal insufficiency is an endocrine uh, autoimmune illness. And it's uh, the third that I have. So I have autoimmune thyroid condition, which I've had since I was 14 years old. Uh, that contributed to the overweight childhood that I had. Oh. And then for another 20 years, uh, no one picked up this Addison's disease. I don't know when it really kicked in, but Addison's disease, um, like most autoimmune conditions, is also life-threatening. And um, it, because it had not been treated for such a long time, I was getting more and more skinny and brown and exhausted and approaching adrenal crisis. So when, you're, uh, at a, when your adrenal glands aren't pumping the necessary steroids into your body, um, your sodium levels plummet, 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 and you eventually go into a coma. And that is exactly what happened to me. You know, and um, like the universe was actually um, yeah. giving you, actually. We, I mean, I know it was harsh at the time and quite often yeah. you know why things are happening and it's upsetting. But in actual fact, you've turned your life around um, yes. and to suit you. Yes. Um, yeah. well, you have the radio show as well. Oh, and I would have stayed in that yeah. job. I would have yeah. stayed there. And I often say to people, I would have died in that job because yeah. there were days when I got so ill and we didn't know what was causing it yet. But I would um, go to work even though I felt you know beside myself I couldn't understand why I was feeling so unwell there was even one day when I couldn't go to work and I went to emergency instead and I felt so guilty that I hadn't come into the radio station and and the boss is like well that's never happening again you know like it was just the pressure to turn up and do a job like that was it was outstanding it was just the most incredible pressure you could ever feel and and yet really at the end of the day it was just a radio show you know but I was so intensely defined by it that I would never would never have walked away from it ever even if it was just making me miserable as it as it clearly was you know my body had to step in and tell me it's time to change the way you work and yeah since then I, I know that I have to have a little more time for rest and uh, I like the flexibility of being able to work from home and that makes a big difference yeah I, I'm getting the sense that you need to listen Yes, yes. <laughs> Listen to the universe. Yeah. The head still sets way too much. Yeah. <laughs> I've recognised it in myself, but I've I've gotten a lot better at it. But it's still work to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So look, I know you're a member of Business Chicks community because that's where I met you, and it is a great um, supporting network. We've got a great group here in uh, Perth. That um, yeah, we're all just. Um, yeah watching each other's backs aren't we which is um fantastic so yes, is there any, any anything else you do um to continue that sense of empowerment how do you do you have down days do oh yeah have, yeah so how do you overcome those I know now when I'm approaching the exhaustion point and it comes so much sooner than it used to for me. You know, I've um, recently just been on two big um, tours of regional WA uh, hosting events, which is something, you know, I really love to do because I love promoting our state. And that's why I still work on Destination WA. I just think it's the most, I'm, I'm very lucky to work on Destination WA, but I also, I'd, I'd, I think I'd continue to work on that show as long as they'll have me because it's so important to share what we have here in Western Australia with the rest of the world. Um, but, you know, when I go off on these tours, um, it's, it's a lot for me physically. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, recently I definitely hit a wall and I had to orchestrate time to rest. Uh, I have the benefit now with the way I work that I can do that. You know, I can be quite uh, deliberate and make changes to my week if I see that it's going to be too busy. The struggle I have is seeing it. Sometimes I just kind of say yes, 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 until I end up in this hole. Um, but, yeah, I'm getting a lot better at looking at the start of the week and maybe at the start of the month and saying, all right, have I given myself enough time 
to just have a day at home where, you know, even just cleaning, <laughs> you know, can make you feel a lot more comfortable about um, the world, kind of, you know, just being home and getting all your ducks in a row. And yeah. Um, yeah, and it's a more restful thing than being out and about all the time. I mean, that's another great thing too, you just rest. And I have had another guest mm. say that. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's really interesting to know. But what, what if you're going to an event and you're not feeling that confident, Carmen? Yep. Um, you know, does that happen and you have to switch on? I mean, what, what techniques do you use to switch that Carmen confidence on? <laughs> <laughs> bit of visualization has to kick in and and I I believe really wholeheartedly in looking for those things that make you feel a million dollars and trying to tap into that so for me uh, I was always most at home hosting a radio show so I would always try before I was going on camera before I was going to an event to try and just remind myself of how it feels when I'm in that moment and we've all got those things you know the those things that you know when you do them you're you're shining you're at your greatest yeah. and they can be past present or even future you know you can have this thing that you visualize in the future is going to make you feel great and just by thinking about it you start to feel better and if you take that feeling into that thing that you're having to go to and switch it on for um same as an on-camera performance you're always going to be a whole lot better when you actually get there so you're now helping others feel empowered so how yeah. are you doing that how are you helping others to feel empowered? Well, I'm helping people lose their connection to perfection. I think that's one of the really big things that holds us back. And it held me back a belief that I had to make perfect video content in order to become a confidence on camera coach. Um, you know, but but it didn't need to be perfect to get the message out there. The message is what's stronger. Your content is what's stronger than the production values around what you're doing. And you're going to help a lot more people if you actually start putting something out there. And, and so I'm really big on helping people just kind of break down the complex around this kind of stuff, you know, so uh, people will say to me, well, you know, I'm not good at X, Y, Z, therefore I shouldn't do this, or I'm too old, or I'm too fat, or I'm not that kind of person. And it's like, well, hang on, your your audience member doesn't care about any of those things. If you're helping them, they, they'll be benefited from it. So I think that's a big part of, of how I'm able to empower people. I'm also pretty candid. <laughs> you know, I really don't believe in glossing over the ugly stuff. And I think that getting to know a person more intimately comes from knowing all sides of them, you know, and, and, and that definitely was a big part of what we did in, in, in radio land, uh, as opposed to TV where there's a bit more kind of glossing over, you know, in radio, it's really about authentic connections. You, we've got nowhere to go three hours of radio a day. You can't fake it. You've just got to be yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and these days as content creators, we've all, got to just be ourselves otherwise we're going to be paralyzed into yeah. inaction. well I'm really pleased you're saying don't worry about perfection because <laughs> yeah I'm just doing this series I'm loving it and uh, I know it's not perfect but yeah so now I've got you yeah, know you're okay that that's yeah <laughs> that you're doing... still adding value you know <laughs> I've, I've really enjoyed listening to these conversations that you're having with people and yeah. you know it, where else are we going to tap into these kind of insights you know, it's a really powerful thing that you're able to do to to ask someone to sit for 20 minutes and reflect on their childhood. You know, it's not necessarily something you could uh, go and do at a networking event. You know, it, it's it's a totally and, and the audience that gets to see it is far greater than if it were a conversation just between two people yeah. at a networking event. You, you know, there's up something really interesting there because I, I mean, I do also work for Qantas part time. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I work with those day, those people uh, day in, day out. And I really don't know too much about them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I, I feel very privileged that you and others have come on here and shared uh, their childhood so I'm getting uh, that you just I don't know had it from your childhood your mother sort of gave you that yep you can do and encourage you to do what you wanted to do and um, yeah you've just always had that and you've taken that um, all along the way but yeah a really important thing is yeah let's listen to the universe a little bit more and, yeah uh, but stop and rest and and let let the universe speak to us and and let it, and let it be heard but look, yeah. I've done one of your confidence on camera 
um, workshops. I absolutely yes. loved it. It was a great day. And so, I mean, I know you do that and other things is emceeing and um, yeah, you'll, um, yeah, you go and host um what do you call them um events and things you know <laughs> yeah, you're, you're amazing I, I love love seeing it all so how could others get in touch with you if they want to do the confidence of camera workshop I think you've got one next week actually oh, um, I do yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> in the coming weeks so yeah how do people get in touch with you Carmen I think the easiest way is to head to Instagram and search on camera with Carmen. Uh, that's my Instagram handle. It's also my handle on Twitter and other places like that. But on camera with Carmen is where you'll find me. Otherwise, Carmen Braidwood, LinkedIn, Facebook and uh, CarmenBraidwood.com.au. You can find all the workshops I'm running in Perth. I also run them virtually. So anywhere in the world you may be, we could actually carry out a confidence on camera workshop or get together and work on a program. Fantastic. That's just brilliant. And Carmen, I've really enjoyed having this conversation with you today. I do know you through you know, networking, but it's it's really lovely to hear about your childhood. I have met your sister Sally, so <laughs> it's really lovely to speak of her a little bit as well. So look, thanks so much, Carmen, uh, for sharing your story today. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Well, thanks, Louise, and thank you for the most comfortable high heels I've ever worn as an event host in my life. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carmen. That's really lovely of you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks, Lou.